Welcome to Pulse episode 64. Time for a little Blizzard news and mostly just World of Warcraft news. We take a look at Blizzard visiting the Nasdaq, patch 4.1 and all that it's becoming, the next few sets of Ask the Devs posts, another Ghost Crawler blog, the next Blizzard store mount, some amazingly cool art updates and much more. Let's get started. On Monday, the 7th of March, Blizzard Entertainment co-founders Mike Morhaim, Frank Pierce and Alan Adham rang the closing bell at the Nasdaq Stock Exchange in New York in celebration of Blizzard's 20th anniversary. Now, while most executives might have spent their free time discussing the financial market, Mike and Frank decided to squeeze in a game of StarCraft 2 instead. If you were wondering who managed to take said game, Frank won their heated TVT mirror match, but it was close. While Mike and Frank were ringing the bell inside, Blizzard was also taking over Times Square outside in the name of our global gaming community. They projected a 7 story high video featuring cinematics from World of Warcraft Cataclysm and Starcraft 2 Wings of Liberty on the Nasdaq Tower for a full hour, marking the first time that Deathwing was ever rendered to scale. Thanks to all our support, Blizzard has been able to spend the last 20 years developing and publishing some of the most epic entertainment experiences ever. So please, be sure to visit their 20th anniversary site to take part in the celebration. And be sure to check out the extensive retrospective video they posted recently along with their Memories of Blizzard video contest. That is indeed some exciting stuff and you can read all about it below. But now, time for the World of Warcraft news. Patch 4.1 news has not showed any signs of slowing down, and seeing all the furious fixing and patching going on on those PTR servers, I doubt we'll have to wait long to see this one hit the live servers. Patch 4.1's notes were updated over on the official site on the 22nd of March, and these updates saw some pretty interesting changes. Most notably, a new feat of strength and associated title, the Camel Hoarder, has been added for players who have bested Dormus the Camel Hoarder and obtained the reins of the Grey Riding Camel, because there must always be a Camel Hoarder. All trade goods available for purchase with honor or justice points from the associated commodities vendors have had their prices reduced by 50%. Yes, I chuckled at that change, especially after Blizzard was so sure that the price was right as high as it was. Along with that, Maelstrom Crystals are now available for purchase with honor or justice points from the associated commodities vendors. Players will now gain proper guild experience rewards for PvP objectives and it seems like many previously locked old world dungeon objects no longer require keys. In my opinion, some of these changes, especially the price reduction on those trade goods and the fixes to the guild experience were long overdue. You can, as usual, find the official updated patch notes below. Time to take a look at a few patch 4.1 extras, in my opinion the best part of the 4.1 news. With the latest updates and changes to the patch notes, a few things did in fact go undocumented, or have just yet to be added to those patch notes. This week you can check the links below to read about the upcoming changes to the daily dungeon system and the new procedures for earning valor points this way. You can check out the full and pretty detailed description by Blizzard below, but the basic rundown is the following. You can earn up to 980 Valor Points per week from random heroic dungeons. Of those 980 Valor Points, only 490 Valor Points can be earned from Tier 1 Cataclysm Heroics. The remaining 490 Valor Points must be earned by running Rise of the Zandalari Heroics, which are Tier 2. Alternatively, you can reach the 980 Valor Point cap by exclusively running those Tier 2 Heroics. The 980 Valor Points you can earn from running Tier 1 and Tier 2 Random Heroics will count towards your weekly overall cap of 1,250 Valor Points. And, as stated before, if you want to maximize your Valor Point gains, you can still reach the overall weekly cap of 1,250 by defeating Raid Level content. Big thanks to Wowhead for that summary. Next up in our extras, you can take a look at the new Daily Dungeon System. Players will now be able to do 7 dungeons a week, instead of 1 dungeon per day. A decent change if you ask me. You can read about the new archaeology items that are set to come with patch 4.1, and you can now see your target's position on the minimap. Also a pretty handy feature that. There are also, as usual, a bunch of new models, 
icons, animations and maps to check out, most notable of which must be the new Karazhan maps that were added. Yes, finally. I wasn't really even aware that Karazhan had a whopping 7 floors. Now that's real dungeon design. All of those extras and more can be found below. Check them out courtesy of WoW Insider, WoWhead and MMO Champion. Back on the live servers, the next set of hotfixes has hit, and well, in the March 16th changes, we see a few modifications to heroic difficulty Blackwing descent encounters, a fix to the Twin Peaks flag carrying graveyard abuse, Chandra's Feather Moon can no longer be pulled too far from her default location before resetting i.e. she won't be waging war from the Orgrimmar auction house anymore, and using macros no longer halts or delays transports. Not very many changes this time around, as I am sure Blizzard are focusing almost fully on patch 4.1 and 4.2 right now. You can however find that full list of hotfixes below. The answers are in from Blizzard's last installment of Ask the Devs, and a new question thread is now once again available. Blizzard just asked that when posting your questions, please keep in mind that each edition of Ask the Devs is now focused on a specific topic, as noted in the thread title. Ask the Devs number 2 was focused on PvP and PvP only, and you can find all the answers to the popular questions of last week below, as there are way too many to cover here. The next issue of Ask the Devs is set to be about the UI and all that goes with it. I can think of quite a few questions for that topic myself. So as always, ask those questions, vote up the ones you like and stay tuned for the answers. You can find both the new thread and the old one linked below. Ghostcrawler is back. In his latest developer blog he talks about progression raiding in Cataclysm. This was, as usual, quite well timed and hit right after a couple of hotfixes were made to Cataclysm encounters just a day or two ago. He addresses what Blizzard feels is the right and wrong way to strike a balance in the heart of their raid-in players. His major argument is that content is always being nerfed, whether through the raiders themselves acquiring better gear, learning the fights a little too well, or Blizzard developers just returning to encounters after their release to make them a little bit more balanced or easier for players. He feels that everything is going as expected as this level of content starts to wrap up and the next becomes even more hotly anticipated. He says that overall he and the entire dev team is really happy with progress. Guilds are clearing the content they expected to clear and pugs are even starting to do the first few bosses in the raids with relative ease. He sees that as signs that Cataclysm raiding, thus far at least, has been a success. There's more to this, yes, as there always is, and if you're keen you can read it all below. Once again, Ghostcrawler does end it off with a pretty interesting line. P.S. I am as excited about the Firelands encounters as I am about the current ones. We can't wait for you to wipe to them, er, uh, see them. As an extra and total contradiction to what I was just talking about, below you can also read quite a few complaints and whines about the current Cataclysm raid content being too inaccessible. Yes, some people seem to think so, even after all the nerfs and changes were made to many of the bosses and encounters. How do you feel about the current state of Cataclysm raid content? Are the bosses and encounters too hard? Too easy? Is Firelands coming at the right time with patch 4.2? Or is it coming too late and Blizzard's making a mistake? Check the interactions below for the full scoop, courtesy of Wowhead. Some good news was released today for all those guilds who want to move to a new realm. Blizzard will soon allow the ability to transfer the guild and its structures easily with the guild relocation service. Netheria just told us that Blizzard wanted to give everyone an early heads up regarding their plan to implement a guild relocation service for World of Warcraft. The idea is for the guild leader to be able to transfer a guild to another realm. The guild structure remains intact, including the guild leader, guild bank, ranks and guild name, depending on availability. Guild members who decide to relocate with their guild may initiate their own paid character transfer. Upon successful transfer they will automatically be part of the guild when they first log into the new realm. Their guild rank and guild reputation will be intact too. Guild leaders who want a change of scenery may also pick a new guild name using another new service. These services are in development and Blizzard will be providing additional details at a future point in time. Lastly, they just wanted to let us know that as with all the features and services Blizzard offer, they intend to incorporate the guild relocation service in a way that will not disrupt the gameplay experience. Please note that this feature will require extensive internal testing, so you may see bits and pieces of the service appear on the public test realms. Sounds good to me and I can't wait to see it implemented. I just hope these services don't cost too much. Read all about it below. 
Next up, yes, another ghost crawler post of sorts. We have Coffee with the Devs, the view from 10,000 feet. This is yet another look at the inner workings of the Blizzard development process, but this time, we're told that it is set to return to the way it was in Wrath of the Lich King. Ghostcrawler said that he's going to have more conversational blog postings at a greater frequency. This is really, really good news for the community, as we will once again have an insight into the design decisions happening at Blizzard and the difficult choices they are making. It is a great, if slightly long read, and the three points he outlines during the post and asks everyone to remember are the following. No promises, don't read too much between the lines, and lastly, no complaints about the topic. There you have it, read the full thing below. Remember that winged white lion mount from last week? Of course you do. And apparently it is coming soon to the Blizzard store. The model is now, as you can see, looking quite complete. Yes, this made more than a few players cringe and definitely made a lot more than just a few quite happy indeed. I have to say, I would probably be in the latter group. Not that I would buy it myself, but I do think that this mount does in fact look a lot better than that silly celestial steed. No word yet on price date of availability, or whether the proceeds will benefit any organization, but you can keep checking back here or over at any of the official Blizzard sites for more. Time for a few Warcraft related art updates. Yes, my always favorite kind of updates. This week we have three sets of two. Two Blizzard art gallery updates, two bonus comic entries, and two daily blink pieces. The Blizzard fan art section has been updated with nine pieces of fan art set within the Warcraft universe. A few of which are really quite cute, like the one on your screens right now. The World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King gallery has been updated with five pieces, also representing the Warcraft universe, and those comic contest entries can be found below too. The first is titled, The Chief is Up, and the second is an incredibly cute one of a Tauren spending time with his calf. They are also quite a laugh and definitely worth checking out. Now, the daily blink entries. First up, we have Tears of Sadness. A look at how shoulder pads have been evolving over the past years. And lastly, another World of Warcraft themed movie poster. You can check the links below for those galleries and the full versions of these images. Now let's head on over to the World of Warcraft smalls. First up in the smalls, is there a blacksmith in the house? Yes, this post is pretty self-explanatory. The next new player tips post is up, titled When in Ogrimmar. BlizzPlanet reports that the WoW TGC 2011 class starter deck is set to release on the 24th of the 5th month of 2011. Cryptozoic Entertainment announces Worldbreaker War of the Elements booster expansion. The World of Warcraft Action Figures Series 7 is in stock. Lastly from BlizzPlanet, you can also check out the World of Warcraft 2011 wall calendar. There are some really cool images in there and it's definitely worth a look. Over at WoW Insider, you can read about a new social site that is launched for coordinating meetups at BlizzCon this year. Then you can read about new quests on the PTR that apparently point to the legendary weapon's origin. New features on WoWhead, once again, a unified login for your ZAM accounts, and a new events calendar. BlizzBlues episode 10 can be checked out below. 13%? The next legendary WoW video podcast is out, this one titled, Buff Mages More Please. The next BFF report can be found below. This one is focused on gods and heroes. Is it a WoW killer? You can head on over to World of Raids to read about the state of World of Raids. Basically, for those wondering, the guys from over at World of Raids have merged with the guys from MMO Champion to make a bigger, better site. Right here on YouTube, you can find Tank Spot's Guide to Heroic Magmar, PST Episode 21, The Weekly Marmot, Gear vs. Skill, and then two more solo videos, the Twin Valkyries and Lich King sneak peek, as well as the Faction Champions. Let's head on over to the World of Warcraft Blues. This week, the Blues have quite a bit to say on Netheria speaking the truth, on broken promises and the development process, on Nubifying WoW, Grinding and Bashiok's Mom, on RSA Vulnerability and Blizzard Authenticators, on people blocking mailboxes with flying mounts, and lastly, on the reasons behind the changes made to the daily dungeon system. That is all I have for you on the World of Warcraft news front, and you can keep checking back here soon for more. If you didn't know, you can also check Total Biscuit's Azeroth Daily out for more frequent updates. Thanks for watching, remember to like it, favorite it, share it, and subscribe. But most importantly, happy Warcrafting.